button on your notification bell you will still get those information you are looking for sit at home order brewing problems in the southeast and it's now anezeta's southeast governance now the apex Igbo social cultural organization honest and Igbo, have stated in clear terms that the seat at home order being declared in the southeast is no longer you know helping anybody in the zone said they they are against the seat at home in its entirety yes honest and said the issue of some unidentified gunmen enforcing the seat at home order in the states of the zone is causing menace. Yes, that's what they're saying. Talking about the the National Public Secretary of Honest uh, and Debo, Dr. Chedoze Obonia, yes, who advised the Southeast governors to prioritize the welfare of the people of the in the area to end the activities of the those who are declaring the seat at home. And so in his statement, in the statement he made, the organizer said through their spokesperson or the secretary said this is the first time that they are seeing fighters or whatever facing the barrel of the gun in wars, crippling the economy and destroying people. And as I said, what is going on is very strange. Some of them think that by chanting Biafra, Biafra, they will become Ojuku. Unfortunately, they don't know how we got here. I don't understand how somebody can wake up from his house and begin to chant Biafra. It is nonsense. Anyone who wants Biafra should let us discuss for us to know whether we are embarking on it or not. This Biafra has created problems for us in the southeast. This is the statement of the ONZ through their spokesperson or their police secretary, Alex, yes, or Chedez Yobania, Alex Obania, yes. So, and that is what ONZ said. But we want to make some clarifications so that our people not be, you know, deceived. You don't say Biafra is creating problems in the Southeast. There's nothing like that. If some persons hijack some processes or go and blackmail people, you will be, I think that should be the, you know, be, the honest and neighbor should be firm on that. If people are blackmailing the organization, like the IPOB, honest, they, they are in the southeast, they know everything happening. The DSS, the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Police, all of them, they are working to make sure they derail agitations in the southeast. And so it's not uh, something that will, you know, be favorable to the people of the zone or the IPOB or the BF agitators to say that people who are causing trouble, who are killing people, they are enforcing, they are, they are people who are making sure that they realize Biafra or they are Biafra agitators. People can just come up and claim anything to incriminate, blackmail a certain group. And uh, the point we're making is that the honest and evil, they are on ground. They are not in Europe, America, they are in the Southeast. So they're supposed to have known all these things. Yes. So there are some statements you make. Begin to induct yourself. BFI is not causing any trouble in the Southeast zone. BFI status are not causing trouble in the Southeast zone. Hoodlums are there causing problems. And if hoodlums are causing problems, the governor should deal with the hoodlums. Not saying the IPOB is causing trouble or BFI status. Who are the BFI status? causing trouble in the zone. Biafra is not causing any problem. And if you want to deal with a problem, you must de deal with it decisively from the background or the foundation. What are the remote causes of these problems we are facing today? That is the most important question. As they should pose to themselves. Answer it. Then we can make a headway. Yes. They said this is creating anxiety and tension in the zone. Of course, we know. But with this, we have been sending this warning. What are the remote causes? What are the immediate causes? When you move to the remote causes, you understand what happened in this country from 1966. That's our Igbo dialect, our Igbo, Igbo, Igbo proverb. 
Yes, nothing happens without something causing it. Yes, action will always bring the action. And so, in 1966, what happened in this country? Pogrom, genocide, killings, ethnic cleansing, wiping out a certain group of persons, of, of uh, a certain people, an ethnic group. You want to eliminate them. One of the one of the three major ethnic groups in the country. Yes, you want to wipe them out, and this thing you know snowballed into a major civil war that saw millions of lives lost on the part of the Biafra. And so all these things, the federal government has failed after their promise of reconstruction, rehabilitation, and uh, reconciliation. What happened? Nothing. Up until this moment, it has been, you know, marginalization, exclusion. The Buhari government exacerbated everything, appointing 70, you know, 70 cabinet members. No Igbo was there. All the service chiefs, as we are speaking for eight years now, no Igbo man is in the service chief or security, architecture, or leadership, or hierarchy of Nigeria. They have been sent. And so a major group like this, you undermine them. You want them, you say they are dots in the country, in the nation. They are this, they are nobodies. And so all these things, you, when you say them, you think that they aggravate things. When Buhari was doing all the things he has been doing since 2015, they didn't question him. People allowed him. And now this thing has snowballed. They, you are talking to human beings. And talking about the arrest, or not even arrest, abduction of Wanyendo. We're talking about the, the even semi-immediate causes, not just the immediate. The abduction of Wanyendo from, you know, the, 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 from Kenya. Torturing, extraordinary rendition, and continued detention and uh, torture in DSS hell. Then the immediate... The court of complete jurisdiction said, look, we released this man, only in the he did nothing wrong. They discharged and acquitted him. The United Nations said, he did, you, you, you are wrong, the federal government, for abducting him in the manner you did. You have to compensate him adequately. None of this was ad adhered to. The government was at demand. They feel that they have the powers. The impunity is just too much. And so, in face of all these things, we have said people may react. Nobody, no same person will, 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 will condone killings under any guise. The killings of innocent persons we're talking about. Innocent civilians, innocent, innocent Nigerians, innocent South Easterners, under any guise. But honestly, have to be very, you know, careful and trade with caution when making statements in such as an environment or such a situation like we have now, very, you know, inflammable environment. And so people should be guided by history. That's what we are saying. So it's not that you are condemning the actions or whatever, the killings, and therefore, then you have to throw the baby with the bat water, with, with, with the bat water. Nowhere. BFI station is clean, is good. Yes, we welcome it. The Igbos welcome it. Talk about the killings. Then you have to make your investigation to know those who are blackmailing this agitation. The federal government to their agencies, security agencies. That is what we are saying. Let us be mindful of the history of what is happening in this country as we make statements concerning what is happening in our zone. Nobody is happy. Nobody is trying to say it is good. For people to be killed, civilians, innocent persons, no same person will condone or accommodate that. That is the point we are trying to make. Or an essay, you have to be up and doing this time around. Do not make statements that will backfire or be a means that you have shot yourself on the leg.